A shooter or shooters on the run after four teens are gunned down to the south side. What we're learning about the men killed in a drive-by shooting. The shooter followed the three along with a fourth survivor from a restaurant at the St. John's Town Center to the Town Center Parkway, then opened fire. Sheriff Mike Williams says this shooting is gang related. My little, my little brother, 23, See, it's, his it's his birthday, so I'm shitting him, trying to get him out of the car though. I'm pressing like the, the door because the door's locked. So I'm trying to press the unlock button, but it's, they still shooting. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm still getting hit and everything. After Young and Ace gets shot and his brother gets killed, you wore a t shirt that said, Rest in Piss 23. Yeah. The beef between Young and Ace and Fulio is one of the most brutal and long lasting feuds in recent hip hop history. At this point, it's nearly impossible to pinpoint exactly when or why this deadly rivalry started. The real reasons behind it have become irrelevant over time, overshadowed by the constant cycle of violence and retaliation. Respect was thrown out the window a long time ago, and now it's just about who can hit the hardest, who can cut the deepest, and who can hurt the most. Things got really ugly when both sides started dropping insanely disrespectful diss tracks. Young and Ace fired the first shot with Who I Smoke, a track where he and his crew blatantly disrespected Fulio's dead homies, even name dropping them in the song. It was shocking to hear the names of real people, real lives lost, being mentioned so casually over a catchy beat. Ace and his crew were boasting about the bodies they claimed, including Fulio's younger brother. Uh, the, the Who I Smoke song drops. Yeah. When you first heard that, what'd you think? He went down, that's how y'all rocking. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And then at one part, when they speaking on my little brother's name, you know? So I was like, yeah. I see what it is. After that, things escalated even further with Fulio responding with his own ruthless diss track, When I See You. He didn't hold back either, throwing insults at Ace's dead friends and his younger brother, who were tragically murdered in a shooting that Ace narrowly survived. Eat on his birthday, four shot, three dead in the worst way. Damn. Fulio responds. He responds with, When I See You. Mm -hmm. Do you hear the record? Uh. I think I think I heard it. I heard it. No, I said like I said, this like this ain't nothing. It wasn't never nothing new. Like them names ain't nothing new. Like yeah. Well, them names new, but I'm saying like the situation speaking on dead people ain't nothing. This beef has left nothing but bodies on both sides, with young men getting murdered and no end in sight. Recently, Fulio himself was murdered proving just how deep and deadly this feud runs. It's a vicious cycle that just keeps repeating itself, with each new diss track, each new act of violence fueling the fire even more. Let's rewind a bit to a particularly tragic day that really illustrates the kind of violence this beef has led to. June 5th, 2018 was supposed to be a day of celebration. Young and Ace, his brother Trayvon Bullard, known as Quan Quan or Two Times, and his best friend Royal Devon Smith Jr., aka 23, were out celebrating. Trayvon had just graduated from Ridgeview High School in Clay County a week earlier, and it was 23's birthday that day. They were joined by another close friend, Jacoby Dashad Groover, aka Four, who was just like a brother to them. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, the brothers go out to eat, man. F it, man, we out here. I'm saying, my, other, my, my brother, my real brother, he had just graduated like two weeks before that. Normally, they wouldn't be out like this, especially given the dangerous lifestyle some of them were involved in. But it was a special occasion, and Ace wanted to do something positive with his brothers to celebrate. They all got dressed up and headed to Wasabi Japanese Restaurant in Jacksonville, Florida, ready to have a good time. Ace was documenting the whole night on Instagram, posting pictures and videos of them smiling and laughing, enjoying themselves on the way to the restaurant. They were surrounded by friends and family, and it was all good vibes. Everyone was just there to have fun and celebrate the good things happening in their lives. But unfortunately, their joy turned into tragedy. Unknown to them, some enemies were lurking nearby, watching their every move, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. As the evening turned into night, the atmosphere was still filled with positivity and laughter. It was a memory everyone thought they'd cherish forever, a night of happiness, of celebrating life and achievements. But then, in an instant, everything changed. Young and Ace and his brothers found themselves in a rare moment of joy, temporarily letting their guard down and forgetting the dangers that came with their lifestyle. For a brief period, they were carefree, not paying much attention to their surroundings or the risks of being out in the open. This lapse in awareness would cost them dearly, 
Unknown to them, the assailants were watching, biding their time. They could have struck at any moment, but chose to wait, focused solely on their four targets, Young and Ace, and his brothers, Quan Quan, 23 and 4. They had no intention of hurting any of the other innocent friends and family members who were there. It was after 10.30 p.m. when the group finally decided to leave the restaurant. Everyone got into their cars and headed out. Young and Ace and his brothers were driving towards Town Center Parkway near Interstate 295, still in high spirits from the night celebrations. Chilling after that, we chilling in the parking lot, laughing, playing, play fighting and shit. Just like... We slipping, for real, for real. We ain't need no point because we're so caught up in the moment. Inside the car, they were playfully arguing about what to do next. Young and Ace wanted to go meet up with his girlfriend who was eating nearby, while his brothers wanted to keep the party going and meet up with some female friends. Just as they were having this lighthearted debate, their car came to a stop at a red light around 10.53 p.m. They were completely unaware that their lives were about to change forever. Young and Ace reached for his phone to call his girlfriend, but before he could even dial her number, everything went south. Out of nowhere, a bullet ripped through his hand, sending his phone flying out of his grasp. So I'm calling him. I'm about to call him. Soon as I pull my phone out, I get shot in my hand. See, my whole hand. See, all this is off. But it, just, it grew back. You know what I'm saying? See, my whole hand. So when they start shooting, I seen it. Suddenly, the sound of gunfire filled the air. Another car had pulled up beside them and was spraying bullets relentlessly. The metal of the car was shredded and even worse, the bullets were tearing through the flesh of everyone inside. The scene turned into absolute chaos within seconds. Realizing they were under attack, Young and Ace tried to act quickly. He reached across from the passenger seat to try and protect his brother, 23, from the oncoming bullets. Despite being hit multiple times himself, Ace fought through the pain and shock to shield his brother. My little, my little brother, 23, see, this is, this is birthday, so I'm shielding him, trying to get him out of the car though. I'm pressing like the, the door, because the door's locked. So I'm trying to press the unlock button, but it's, they still shooting. Like, you know what I'm, saying? I'm I'm still getting hit and everything. Desperate to save him, he managed to get the door open and pulled 23 out of the car. They both collapsed onto the ground, but 23 was badly hurt and couldn't move. His body was in shock, completely frozen. Ace, despite being wounded, crawled along the pavement, trying to get away from the gunfire. When he turned back to check on everyone else, his heart sank. The car was riddled with bullet holes. Same thing with going out the car. But he can't really move for real, for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? His body's so locked. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, like, I got, like, I get, like, crawling a little piece and I turn back around. I just see the whole car just, like, fucked up. He could hear his brother Quan Quan struggling to breathe, his breath sounding more like faint dying wheezes. 23 was reaching out his hand, calling for Ace, clearly in agony. Time was slipping away fast, and they were all in critical condition. Young and Ace had been hit eight times, 23 around five times, and Quan Quan three times, one of which was a fatal shot to the head. Four had been struck about 12 times, his body riddled with bullets. The scene was heartbreaking. His brothers were bleeding out right there on the cold, hard concrete. With what little strength he had left, Young and Ace managed to call his girlfriend desperate for help. She understood the gravity of the situation and raced over, arriving even before the ambulance did. To her shock, she found a crowd of people standing around more interested in recording the scene on their phones than actually helping. Without hesitation, she jumped into action trying to check on everyone and wrap their wounds as best as she could. My, my girlfriend, she watching all this shit. She beat the ambulance. And there's people who help. There's people who there's other cars here. Nobody really called the ambulance. They all just standing around taking pictures. You know what I'm saying? That's how fucked this like this world is. When the ambulance finally arrived, it was clear that not everyone was going to make it. Only two of them were still alive, Young and Ace and 23. The medics worked quickly, rushing 23 to the hospital first, followed closely by Young and Ace. But with only one ambulance on the scene, it was a race against time to save their lives. Despite the emergency efforts, 23 sadly passed away from his injuries. Young and Ace managed to survive, but his three brothers, Quan Quan, 23, and 4, all died that night. He was left as the lone survivor of a brutal attack that wiped out nearly everything he held dear. Men were all riding together in this car on Town Center Parkway when people in another car that pulled up beside them started shooting at them. Kenyatta Bullard, who goes by the nickname Ace, was the only person in the car who survived the attack. Stuck in a hospital bed, Young and Ace was left to drown in his grief, replaying those last horrific moments over and over in his mind. He was wrapped in bandages, trying to come to terms with the physical pain from his injuries and the far deeper emotional scars from losing his brothers. Quan Quan, 23, and 4 weren't just his brothers, they were childhood companions. They had all grown up together, sharing the same streets and dreams. Now Ace was left questioning why he had survived when they hadn't. 
He was tormented by guilt, feeling like he had failed to protect them and terrified of the moment he would have to face their parents and loved ones. Out of the four who were shot that night, only Ace and his brother Quan Quan had ties to gang life, and the police were quick to classify the attack as gang related. The rivalry, it seemed, was between two notorious factions. Ace was allegedly associated with ATK, which stands for Ace to Kill or Aim to Kill, while the opposing side, KTA, Kill Them All, was reportedly led by another rapper, Julio. Fulio. The authorities had been tracking these gangs for a while, blaming them for a wave of violence and crime across the city. Both groups used their music not just as an outlet for their experiences, but also as a way to brag about the lives they had taken, escalating tensions with every beat and verse. Ace and Julio Fulio didn't hide their beef. They were open about their disdain for each other, regularly posting videos where they taunted and disrespected one another, turning personal tragedy into public spectacle. So, when Ace's brothers were killed, Fulio didn't waste any time adding salt to the wound. He released a video mocking their deaths, laughing at the loss, which was a cold reminder of the unforgiving nature of their world. This that 4X? Who else that is? Quan Quan! Dun, dun, dun. His ass in the L. Look at his ass in the L. With the motherfucking and star. Fulio didn't stop there. He posted pictures online taking cruel jabs about the assassination of Ace's brothers, even going as far as sharing an image of 23's gravesite with his crew. The tragic deaths of Young and Ace's brothers were just another grim statistic in the ongoing cycle of violence that has plagued their community for generations. This was a world where young lives were lost too soon, trapped in a brutal cycle of gang rivalry and retaliation. Despite the unimaginable loss, Ace chose to honor his brothers in the most personal way he could. He got their faces tattooed across his abdomen, ensuring that they would always be a part of him. He also made a vow to keep their memory alive through his music. Ace poured his pain into his songs, hoping that his raw emotion could help others avoid the same fate tracks like Pain became anthems, not just for his grief, but for a message of survival and transformation. But the story took another dark turn earlier this year when Julio Fulio met a tragic end on his birthday. He was murdered in an act of violence that seemed almost inevitable given the life he led. A birthday celebration that took a turn for the worst. Now cars filled with bullet holes and to find out why famous rapper Julio Fulio, who just turned 26, was shot dead early this morning. Throughout his career, Fulio had faced multiple attempts on his life. In October of 2023, he was shot in the foot in Jacksonville, Florida. This happened on the 3100 block of 18th Street West, a residential neighborhood less than a mile from a school. The black Dodge Challenger he was driving was riddled with bullets. His mom took to Instagram to ask for prayers, posting, keep Fulio my son in y'all prayers. He was shot. 3100 block of West 16th Street, about a person shot. An adult male in his mid-20s transported himself to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The victim sustained a single gunshot wound to the foot. Before that, in November of 2021, he was targeted again. This time, it happened on the 2000 block of Ernest Street in Riverside. Fulio made the news for shooting back in self-defense and managing to escape. Shortly after, he went live on Instagram saying, I shot back in self-defense, my gun is registered, and if I did something illegal, the police would have put me in jail. AN did miss 100 shots though, they must have thought I was lacking for sure. Fans were used to Fulio going live after these incidents. In July of 2020, after getting shot in Houston, he allegedly got hit in the buttocks and still went live on Instagram to update his fans. Nigga, oh. oh. I know nigga mad I ain't dead, ain't it? He was mad I ain't dead, okay? What you talking about, nigga? Yeah. By 2023, Fulio had already survived three public attempts on his life, with two of them leaving him injured. Fast forward to 2024, and yet another attempt was made on Fulio's life. He had just turned 26 in June of 2024, and decided to celebrate by throwing a pool party. Naturally, he went on Instagram to share the location, letting his followers know where the party was at. But as the day progressed, things took a turn. According to his Instagram posts, it seems he had to switch locations to a Holiday Inn because, as one of his posts stated, the police had kicked him out of the original spot. Just hours after that update, Fulio's girlfriend went on X with a heartbreaking message. Y'all took my boyfriend from me, I hate y'all and I won't be the only one crying. 
Shortly after her post, a video clip from the Holiday Inn parking lot surfaced on social media. It was confirmed that around 4.30 in the morning in Tampa Bay, Florida, Fulio was found shot along with three other people. Tragically, Fulio, the 26-year-old rapper celebrating his birthday, didn't survive. Yes, so at this point, three people are in the hospital. We're working to get the best update on their condition. One person was pronounced deceased. Thankfully, his killers were caught. The Tampa Police Department held a press conference where they revealed that Isaiah Chance, 21, Alicia Andrews, 21, and Sean Gathray, 18, have been charged with first-degree murder. These arrests were made in Jacksonville. Isaiah Chance, Alisa Andrews, Sean Gathright, Davion Murphy, and Richard Murphy are all accused of playing a role. Back up, back up, back up. All right, go to your knees. Get your hands behind your back. The cops also released new footage from the shooting that took place on June 23rd. In the footage, you can see several masked gunmen moving around the Tampa Holiday Inn parking lot taking positions in the bushes, and firing dozens of rounds into the vehicle carrying Julio. And they are shooting at Charles now, and you can see that he's the passenger in that car that's moving and trying to flee. And again, they're still shooting at him. He's the right front passenger in that vehicle. Another thing Fulio's fans are probably thankful for is that his killers were pretty careless and sloppy, which made it easier for the police to catch them. Otherwise, Fulio's death might have just ended up as another unsolved mystery. They rolled into Tampa in two cars, a silver Chevy Cruze and a black Chevy Impala. Isaiah and Alicia drove the Cruze while Sean Gathright was behind the wheel of the Impala, which was registered under his mom's name. People online were losing their minds over how dumb these criminals were. One comment read, these gotta be the world's dumbest criminals. Another one asked, bro must hate his mom because why would you use your mom's car to go commit a murder? It's like these guys were trying to set a new record for criminal blunders. And honestly, it's no wonder they got caught. Tampa is full of surveillance cameras, and they were captured in high definition several times, including during the actual murder. When they hit Tampa, the crew started tracking Julio. Julio had announced his plans on Instagram, letting everyone know he'd be at Teaser's Gentleman's Club and Truth18 Nightclub. Isaiah and Alicia followed him in the Silver Cruise, and every move they made was captured on camera. At both clubs, Isaiah was seen using Alicia's phone, which was later confirmed by call records showing he was in contact with Sean Gathright, who was in the Impala with Rashad and Davian. The tension mounted as the group followed Julio to their final stop at Holmes Two Suites. The crews did a couple of laps around Julio's car, giving the signal for the Impala to move in. Two suspect vehicles continued to follow Jones, just as they did at Teasers, and eventually to the Home Two Suites near USF. They're approaching the victim's position on foot. Once in position, Gathright and the Murphys opened fire with a handgun and two rifles, killing Julio. Julio's car sped off, but the damage was already done. Tesla show three shooters firing several shots at the vehicle Jones was riding in, killing him. The shooters thought they had pulled off the perfect crime, but they severely underestimated modern surveillance technology. After the shooting, the gang went back to their Airbnb, which was booked from June 22nd to 24. The police had a ring camera at the front door that captured key footage of their movements. We could see Isaiah stepping out briefly with a champagne flute, Davian carrying a bag, and the whole crew passing by the camera multiple times. Alicia was also caught on camera wearing the same clothes from the murder. All this footage was gold for the investigators, helping them piece together what happened and identify the suspects. But the investigation didn't stop with the Airbnb footage. Detectives kept tracking Sean Gathright's movements. About 12 hours after the murder, Gathright showed up at a family member's house dressed in all black, just like in the surveillance footage. He went inside for a couple of hours, then came back out around 6.30 p.m. While chatting on his phone, Gathright was seen cleaning the exterior and interior door handles of his car with a rag. He also moved multiple multiple bags into the garage where a 2004 gold forerunner was parked. Then he left in the forerunner. That forerunner turned out to be the group's downfall. It led the feds right to their doorstep. 
A few days later, Gathright was arrested while driving the Forerunner. Rumor has it that Gathright might have flipped and snitched on his accomplices because, in less than a month, the cops had managed to close in on all of them. But Fulio's death set off a fresh wave of speculation. With Fulio gone, everyone knew there would be fallout. People in the streets started whispering that Young and Ace might be the next target, as Fulio's crew would most likely be looking for revenge. Just check this video out. All these niggas, new age gangsters, all these old niggas, they hiding, hiding, not in the city, hiding, not in the city. Why they homeboys getting stepped on? I ain't finna tweet for y'all today though. What it is, it's a good day, man. Long live Fulio. This is La Cracka, a close associate of Fulio who's been hitting up Instagram Live talking about how Young and Ace and the ATK crew are laying low in their homes. This guy's basically suggesting that KTA is actively hunting for Ace and his people, and the only reason we haven't heard about another tragedy is because they're keeping a low profile. Everyone knows about the notorious beef between Young and Ace, Fulio, and their respective gangs, so it's pretty natural for Ace to be a prime suspect in Fulio's death. Ace didn't do himself any favors either when, just hours after Fulio's death, he dropped diss tracks claiming credit for the hit and gave interviews throwing shade at Fulio's passing. Sipping on my drink and shit. Some might see this as typical behavior in the gang world, but as more info comes out, it's making Ace look more and more suspicious. For instance, some guy went online recently claiming he's the one who actually murdered Fulio for a payout of $10,000 allegedly from Young and Ace. I did that, you feel me? Get more money on his head, you feel me? I rock, I rock with Ace and them boys, you feel me? ATK, you feel me? I be in Jacksonville heavy, you feel me? If you know, you know. Now sure, this guy might be clout chasing for views, but if you know how these things work in the streets, you know that it doesn't matter if Ace put out the hit or not. What really matters is what people think. If Fulio's people believe Ace had something to do with it, they're going to want to make him pay, whether he's guilty or not. Gangs aren't exactly known for their fact checking or concern for evidence, and even though the authorities have come out saying they won't put up with any retaliation or revenge from rival gangs, the streets have their own set of rules, and they're not too concerned with what the police tolerate. At this point, if things aren't handled carefully, we might be looking at another tragic headline soon. There's a real possibility that Young and Ace, along with many members of his ATK crew, could be front and center in the inevitable cycle of revenge.